Fun. So we got started after the 2021 uh, Nature Journaling Conference. <clears throat> that, um, wasn't it, was it 21 or was it 20? 21, because I was, I, I was, that was my first conference and I got really inspired, but could, just couldn't like, I was so new to it. I, I just wasn't ready to like jump in and then I couldn't. And anyway, it's today I'm here. <laughs> so. Well, yeah. So yeah, uh, Beth Ann, um, we named her class the Skyscape Pedo class. And then well, you can see from the, oh, really? um, I, I listened to that one over and over again because I got so much from that session. So it anyway, is. And it's so once skies are really intimidating I think especially for beginners and um, and then you want to start doing really really complex ones and and if you're working in a journal that in itself is really limiting because I'm finding that as I experiment like trying to do northern lights and things I a journal paper doesn't do it you need like super heavy uh 140 plus pound paper because you're putting huge amounts of water and stuff. And, um, and so, you know, depending on how we are approaching this, it's not studio art. So we have to come up with our own ways of succeeding. Um, so if you're new to the group, um, we're at just a casual meetup. This isn't a class or a workshop. Um, Deborah, are you here yet? Um, I don't, I'm looking in the, the list. Deborah Khan, Deb Khan, and Beth Ann Burton, and I kind of started this as a fun just get together to practice these, these things. Um, and if you go on the website, our Skyscape Edo section of my website, you can see all the past meetups. Um, but this one is going to be about, about winter landscapes, skyscapes, and I've had a lot of fun playing with, with that. Um, I think Deborah's not here yet. Let me see if I got no email from her uh, to just, hopefully she'll be here soon. Um, Roseanne, if you want to put me in as co-host in case something happens until she gets there, that's fine. Thank you. That would be great. I will do that. That just tell me if there's something. I think we had a little glitch last time I did that. So um no, let, let me know good. if there's um okay. If you need to leave early, just let me know and we'll swap no, someone. I'm here. That that lets that lets the event keep going if my internet plops. So so what we're doing today. So welcome everyone to the um I'm sorry there's been a really long hiatus. It was a crazy busy year, you know, with being able to meet in person again, doing so many classes. I was basically traveling and busy from June through November. And um, and we just, none of us could get our act together. Yeah, I saw Marsha and a lot of you in person at events. Um, Valerie, yay. Um, it was so much fun. So now we're back though. And I thought it would be really fun to kind of focus on our winter landscapes. Um, put in the chat, if you have a sec, put in the chat um, where you are, are, are dialing in from. It's always fun to see uh, where, where we are, are all from. So right now I'm in Tucson, Arizona. Um, next, on, on Wednesday, <laughs> we're flying up to Fairbanks to spend Christmas in Alaska for the first time. And I just looked at the, it's been like really nice there. I've been looking at the weather, you know, it's been like zero and sunny. And um, on Wednesday, it's supposed to be like minus 20. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, what have we done? <laughs> so we'll see. <laughs> um, so I'm in Arizona. So we've got California, Monterey, Monterey. Hi, Danny. Um, lots from California, Virginia, yay. Um, Lake Havasu, fantastic. Great, lots of different, um, Tennessee, we're all over. Um, Oxford, Ohio, Washington, hi Jan, Jan's in Tucson. Yeah, we've been really spoiled with lovely weather here, so um, fantastic. So one of the things I've, I've been doing this 
last couple of weeks um, is, is playing with um, kind of the Northern Lights, like watercolor with Northern Lights. I'm, I'm here to tell you, I don't have anything decent to show you because one, I haven't been up there yet to actually see them. So I'm working from, from uh, photos. Uh, every time we were up there this past year, uh, it's been cloudy. <laughs> The northern lights were ever it was supposed to be see them and then it was cloudy so we, we couldn't see them but um oh you know one of the things i'm learning and any anyone please just chime in uh i would love to hear more who've who've experimented with that but a it's really so in watercolor to get that brilliant color against a really dark uh background uh is is really really challenging that's where I realized, you know, working in my journal is really hard because for the kind of saturation you need to get those brilliant colors, it it just doesn't work on 90 pound paper. Um, so working on much, much heavier paper is better. And then the colors you choose, the actual pigments, the, the paints, sorry, the paints, not the pigments that you use is, is also really important. I tried some tutorials from people and discovered I didn't have the the paints those people had. And also once I did it, it just didn't work. So, you know, I finally kind of, I finally got something to work, but not, not to my satisfaction. Um, Roseanne? I need, yeah. I did this yesterday. Oh, let me, let me make yours big. Oh, and tell us how you did it. That's fantastic. Oh, yay. Tell us how you did that. It was from a, a, a picture that I took um, in Iceland Ooh. when we saw the, um, the Aurora Borealis. I, I mean, it, it looks okay, but it's, it's really not very good. Um, See, I, did, I think it looks fantastic. Yeah, everyone well, else is going, yahoo, yeah. What I did was um, I made the paper and I did it yesterday instead of today because there was a lot of drying time. Yeah, exactly. So I made it really wet and then I, I put in the greens. And I, I did look at a, a one Vic, um, tutorial and that's what I sort of worked from. So, so I did what, the what colors did you use? It's, it's, I think it's really good to learn what pigments we're all using. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Let so because they all behave <laughs> differently if you have ones that are more transparent I, I'm kind of thinking it's better to have ones that are more opaque that push the other pigments out of the way when you drop them in it kind of pushes the dark pigments out which is what you want that brightness you can reserve the them but that's also really sticky well the darkest part I know I remember that I used um um uh, a violet color. Mm -hmm. Oh, I need my glasses for this. Um, <laughs> Roseanne, what did you say pushed them away? What kind? Well, I'm, I'm just so transparent colors. If you're, I only have transparent colors. And when I drop them onto each other, they tend to just blend together. So I get kind of a mud. And if you have more opaque watercolors, so say your yellow is a, um, was it cobalt yellow? Um, what's the yellow that's really more opaque? It'll it'll push the other pigments out of the way when you drop it onto a dark. So okay. the cadmium. cadmium. Cadmium, thank you. Yes, cadmium is more, it's an aggressive pigment that that doesn't, you know, the transparents all like to blend together, which is why I like them, that they're good for glazing and things like that. So yeah, so Jan, that was beautiful. I really like that. I think everyone else. I know I used cadmium green. Okay. And I know I, um, then I used it with, well, I started with the light colors. Um, and I know I put some yellow in it at some point. I mm -hmm. used quinacrinine rose. Okay, good. Um, yeah. And I kind of mixed that with um, cadmium red. Um, and then I just used a, a violet with some pain gray, pain's gray. Okay, nice. Okay, that's a good that's a good combo to know. So everyone note that. Um, 
I have Deborah has just sent me a message, so I'm going to send her the link. She's not able to get on. Um, so let and me. And I use my finger a lot. <laughs> I just, I just yeah. finally. Oh my gosh! Sorry, guys <laughs> or people. <laughs> um, I am here. Uh, thank you. Okay, great. No worries. Um, let me, let me. Uh, so Jan was share, sharing her fantastic um, Northern Lights. We were talking about. I'm going to spotlight her again. Um, look at that. Isn't that bad? I think that purple really makes it because it buzzes against the green. So you get this right. really nice energy going. I think I'm going to try dioxazine violet. Um, and if, yeah, I can but, find the link that I, if I can find the link I used, I'll put it in the chat. Fun. So Marcia says, I wonder if adding a tad of white gouache. Um, yes, I, Marcia, that's how I finally got this brightness that I like better was having more gouache. And that's why I say maybe using like cadmiums are more opaque than transparent. So they're a more aggressive pigment. So super fun to experiment. You just have to remember what you do. Like I use my fingers a lot to just, yeah, you got to be careful if you're using cadmiums and stuff. Be careful with that, by the way, Jan, because that's a really toxic yeah. paint. So yeah, use I had a, yeah, I, well, I used, I had a, um, a bowl of soapy water. Yeah, good. <laughs> as soon as I finished, get it off your skin. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we forgot that this stuff isn't non-toxic. It's, it's some of the chemicals they use are pretty wild. Um, so I also um, did some fun you know, winter landscapes in the desert, I don't have a lot of <laughs> my, you know, we don't have a ton of snow, so I don't have a ton of um, experience with that, but I'm going to share. So I, I had fun. Some of you might've seen the end result this morning. I posted on social media of this fun winter landscape with a snowy sky that I did. I'm going to share with you guys kind of the backstory and how I did it. And then we can start sharing um, anyone else who has, because Mary, Mary Larson's here. Um, she went to Art Iceland. And so I'm hoping, Mary, you can share yours. I'm going to share Lisa Spangler. I don't think she's here. If you are, let me know. Um, she's at Side Oats on Instagram, who did a really fun recent one. And don't forget to go look at Padlet. We've and I'll share it if you guys aren't on it. There's some really fantastic ones people have shared. So what I'm going to do is share my my. Um... Yes. Okay. Yeah, so what I'm going to show you and your desktop. Okay. So I'm going to share the process of how I did this kind of winter night sky or evening sky, and then a little bit of uh, desert in the foreground. And this was off a fun, um, what inspired me was a fun tutorial by Lisa Spangler, who's at Side Oats, I was just talking about. And I'm explaining to you kind of the process and what paints I used. So this what is this is my lighter weight paper because I really, I, I like to always use the same paper because if I bounce around with different types of paper, I kind of lose the language of the way my paints work with my paper. And then I get all spazzed out and I don't do a good job. So this is my standard 90 pound paper, but I taped it down. Um, so doing this in my journal would be not as easy. And I used my standard colors, which are uh, the, the manganese blue, the so just a triad plus the two extra colors so i just used manganese blue for my cyan my magenta is quinacridone rose and then um uh, yellow is areolan yellow so they're all transparent colors so um and then my extras are uh, burnt sienna and in dan blue which is a really dark warm blue so i'll walk you through oh, and then i used some some white gouache so so here I did a wash of the cyan at the top, manganese blue, and then I did the dark blue at the bottom, and there I had to add it more, so I needed more pigment, and blended them together. And then I added the white gouache using um, a, 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 an old toothbrush, and I'll explain to you in a minute why I did it that way because 
all the tutorials you'll see on on the internet, everybody just loads up their paintbrush with white gouache, and then they just kind of like do this really slick little splat with their with their paintbrush. And I'll show you how that did not work for me. But um, so I used white gouache to create the snow, and here's why. <laughs> What happened when I did it the other way? <laughs> it went everywhere except on my paper. So use the, uh, if you want to control it, I recommend the toothbrush version. Um, and then once it's dry, uh, then you get that kind of dark at the bottom, lighter at the top. And instead of doing pine trees like everyone else does, I'm in the desert right now. So we did a desert, um, I did a desert scene now. I darkened the bottom using a dark blue after I did the dark green. And just to speed things up, I because it was raining the weekend, I did this. Then really thick gouache to make the bright snow on the saguaro cacti and other cactuses. And then instead of spattering again, which I just can't control, I'm just, I, I just did it. I wanted brighter dots at the foreground. And then I did my clouds with gouache and then a little bit of gray to darken and then a little bit more of the pure white to give me kind of the cloud thing. A little bit more of the, I wanted the, again, the white. And then I decided I wanted red. So I drew a cardinal sitting on my scene and um, drew him in and then used my, uh, Quinacridone rose with a little bit of yellow to create a red and let it dry. And then I glazed again over it. You'll see in just a second. I think I hit it with the blow dryer again. Yep. <laughs> um, I glazed over it with pure uh, magenta, which gives it a brighter look. So the bright red cardinal and then a little bit of darks for his feathers. And then I decided to, after I wrote, so this is my holiday greeting to everybody. Happy holidays. And then I decided Mr. Cardinal needed to be a little bit more festive. So he got a Santa Claus hat, which was with gouache. So there you can see it dried. Um, and you see how the brighter gouache bits kind of come forward and then it, the ones that I did on the wet go back in the distance. So that was really fun to do. Um, after I got the gouache cleaned off my desk, my face, my jacket, everything. <laughs> Anyone else experiment with the gouache technique of splattering? Yeah, Susan, how does yours do? Um, I don't know if I can get that up. Yeah, I've got you spotlighted. That's nice. Oh my gosh, I love the round. Tell us how you did it. Um, well, I, I just swirled around and and filled it with color. I didn't pre-wet it. I didn't do anything. Um, I what find color, that- what, what, Do you remember what colors you used? Um, I think I was experimenting with the Indanthron blue. Yeah, it's a um, nice- to get because it's not um, it's not one of my go-to colors, so I was outside of the box on that one. Yeah, and I, I like just it. put it's it's not a true aurora, but it alludes to one. I um, like it. So, how did you get the bright colors pushing out into the the darks? So, for I beginners, the, that's a real challenge. I painted, I painted the dark on the outside first. And then when I put the yellow in, it is the fresh water. Yes. So anything that's sure. fresh is going to push everything out. And I did the same on this one too. Ooh, can... sweet. And that one was more thinking of the Aurora. I did not have um, a picture to work from. I This is just strictly out of my head. Nice. Um, I was planning on the snow reflecting um, the colors more mm -hmm. than, and again, I used the Indanthrone blue 
it was darker when I started, but then when the other water bloomed into it, mm -hmm. um, it became lighter. I like that. So what, how did the bright, bright green is really very much Aurora green. Um, what colors did you use to create that green? What did I use for that green? That's a really good question. <laughs> and that's, so that's the, I think that colors we choose that's are really probably, important. It's, it's, it's quite likely that it was spring green, you know, it that looks, real yellow. Yeah. It might've yeah. been the yellow, like the sallow yellow green or the spring green. Um, I, I, I'm sorry that I don't really remember correctly offhand. I, I'm pretty sure it was either spring green or um, uh, the sallow yellow green or okay. the, uh, in that yellow. zone. Thalos are really um, strong colors. So that, that would be a good choice. Um, I do have phthalo green. I haven't played with that yet for, for that. because it's well, just... it, It'd be the yellow green. Otherwise, okay. it's not going to be bright, bright enough. No, it won't be. Um, Jan says she and, and... is sap green, which um, well, so the, these pre-mixed greens, you, you can go in, dive into, like go to Daniel Smith or whoever you bought it from and and look at what the base colors are. And then if you happen to have those, you can you can make that color as well, because I think sap green is is, you know, is a two, two to three color blend. It's pre-blended. If somebody yeah, knows, I, I, let us know. <laughs> and I also did a sky scapito of today. Oh, let me see. Whoops, I accidentally. Uh oh, that doesn't show. It's it's uh blown out. Oh sure. Oh no, it's showing. That's oh, you did. Is it snowing? <laughs> no, it's not snowing. It's just raining. It's been raining uh, uh, heavily for the last right. couple of days. Yeah, I'm I'm on the in the rainforest of British Columbia. Oh, so, so it, it, you are saturated. You can't even. You can't distinguish anything. I'm looking out the window right now. You can't distinguish anything. Nice. You know, like there's not even a lighter area. It's just all this color. <laughs> yeah. That might be nice. I like that. Um, uh, Susan, Rhonda was asking if you cut the watercolor paper in circles or um, buy it that way. So this one is handmade paper from India. Yeah, you which know, was really that. I was um, it, it warped a little bit as you can see, but um I don't pre-wet them, I don't tape them down, yeah. nothing like that. And then this one is not a hundred percent uh cotton rag. It was just a circular um pad of paper that's um gee I don't know how wide that would be but maybe 10 inches. Nice. The paper from yeah. India, I got some too. I'll have to remember what the brand is. It's really heavy. There's, there are many, many different brands of um, handmade paper um, from India. And uh, my, my latest discovery was I bought this just not for the gold cover, but because it was the handmade paper. And this one is... Um, Lama Lee handmade paper, but what I really liked about it was that when I tried it out, um, that was just a little watercolor uh, to see it did not bleed through. It laid down very nicely like any other watercolor paper I used, and I soaked this. I tried it with my ink pens. My fountain pen nibs did not catch on the fibers. Ooh. They did not bleed through, and that's carbon black ink nice and that it didn't bleed through and the, f the flower looks weird because I literally soaked that paper as much as I could and it didn't bleed through either so this one is called I bought I, I'm not planning on filling this book I'm planning on taking the paper out as I oh. use it Okay, I'm going to put in the so I do know that one water one of the papers Susan's talking about is you can look for it. It's called Shizen, S-H-I-Z-E-N. Um, they do round uh, watercolor sheets. Um, and I have some there, they're, but they're not good for ink. 
um, that my pen catches on them. So they're pretty nubbly. Yes. That was why I was really impressed with this, um, this book of, uh, it's L-A-M-A-L-I, Lamalli handmade paper. And, um, and I would, that's why I was really impressed with this one because I could write on it with my fountain pen nice. just, just fine. Yeah, didn't, the, sky, the nib nice. So sky so, toes require sometimes a fair amount of water. So having the heavier paper is great. So Valerie, I'm putting Valerie up next. She's gonna share. I'm trying. I'm trying. Here you go. This is the pad. Oh, oh yeah. Chroma, chroma mm -hmm. blends. Okay. Sorry. Let me. Let me. Um. Let me add. Sorry. I keep holding that back up. There you go. Chroma blends, um, circular watercolor paper. Okay, that's great. Oh, and it look, actually, yeah, if you just Google, Google no, round no watercolor water. paper, all these brands will come up. And it and it's set down like a block. Nice. And nowhere, nowhere on here does it say what the paper content is mm. whatsoever. There's 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 absolutely no reference. And then the little one was. Um, Saint Armand uh, paper made in Montreal. I've heard of that. Nice. Yeah, that's a real that's, specialty that's, one. Yeah, it is. It's it's really really lovely um, handmade paper from Montreal, not India. A lot of the time, um, you, everything we get handmade paper wise is from India. Yeah. Anyway, that that's is. it. Thank you. And check the chat, folks. We've had some people dropping um, resources in, so that's fantastic. Thank you all for looking those up. Valerie, what have you got? Hey, well, you're just, aware where it's really cold and snowy. Yes, it is. It is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. Um, speaking of cold, one, last week, one of our local nature journal groups, um, some of us did a constellations of the, the northern hemisphere in the winter. Nice. And, um, and well, and it's functional too. I just want to point that out. Yes. I could take this out and, you know, it's like a little map. Here's this. Ooh, fun. Oh my God. So that was, that was Payne's gray, you know, the purple, and then um, ultramarine blue. Nice. Those are all very textured watercolors. So that's beautiful. Thank you. Of course, I ran out of space up here at the top, so that that particular constellation became kind of it became black. I kind of like the way it it goes up. It's kind of like it's a viewfinder where it's just it shows you that the sky keeps going, right? It's yeah, it's kind of nice. Well, How did you do the gouache splats without covering your face in gouache? Well, what I do, and I know a lot of people use the the toothbrush technique, and that's very effective. But well, what I do is I load up my brush with whatever, with the gouache or whatever it is I'm going to splatter. Then I take a pen or a pencil and then I just tap it over but the. That's what I paper. did, Valerie, and it came back on my face. Oh, good you, golly. You were hitting it the wrong way. Okay. You, yeah. lo you load your, your brush uh -huh. and you tap it. A lot of people hang onto the, the brush and they and they yeah, tap the brush maybe if you do that that's yeah. loaded with paint tap the brush onto whatever your other implement is yeah that's what i did no i'm just as yeah. fast <laughs> you've got to tap no. the brush that's loaded with the paint oh you hold the, the you hold the loaded brush down and then you tap it you tap it if you tap with it you're going to get it everywhere that's what i did and you can oh try God. it both ways. Try it both ways for yourself and you'll see. Valerie's just more coordinated than I am. <laughs> <laughs> it works for me. I I, you know, whatever it, it works. Um, and um and and Jan reminds us we can also use gel pens. <laughs> yeah, that's what I did. Um I used a gel pen for the lines. Um, I know some people have steadier hands than I do. And I wish I was one of those people, but I just used a gel pen and it, it worked out really well for, for me. No, what, what brand of gel pen do you use? Because um, my gel pens, they're, they're 
not real opaque. Mine too. Well, and this one isn't always, you know, I had to get like, I'd go on a spare piece. First of all, it's a uh, uniball, uniball um, Signo. And um, if you can see that. There we go. I put and, it in the chat. Okay. And usually what I would do is I'd get it, kind of get it going on a scrap piece of paper. And then I'd use it on my, mm. on, on my journal page. Because sometimes these things, I've yet to find a gel pen that, you know, is really as cooperative as I want it to be. Me too. My, I'll, um, I'll use one, it'll work great. And then a month will go by and I'll go get it. And it, it's stuck work, it's clogged up. It doesn't work anymore. So the, the Signo gel pen comes um, in two sizes. Um, there's a, a, like the regular one and then there's a finer one. Okay, that's good to know. That's good to know. Yeah, so, oh, and Marsha reminds us. Um, thank you, Marsha. So apps, so apps for your constellations. What did you use, um, Valerie? Actually, I used a, I used a reference, uh, uh, not my app. I have an app called uh, Star, Star, Star Trek. Star oh, Walk. I'm sorry? Star Walk. No, I have a different one. And I don't know where my phone is, but it's a freebie app because okay. I like free. And um, I think it's Star Tracker. Okay. And uh, it's really pretty cool because it, it plays this really neat music in the background while you're, you know, looking for um, constellations. Nice. Um, so it's a, it's a good resource also, even if you're not journaling, that's that's a good resource. I am, um, but there, there are several out there and different people like different ones. Nice. That was really fun. So I hope, um, can you post the photo of that to the Padlet? Um, I can try. <laughs> so I, I'm going to drop in, the, let's see, I want to drop in the, um, well, I was going to drop in the chat, the oh, here it is. Padlet. Here, here's the Padlet uh, address. Just as a reminder, so hold on. Um, Valerie, you gave us three. You gave us three colors: mm -hmm. Ains gray, ultramarine blue. What was the other one? And dioxazone, dioxazine purple. That's a really nice color. I use it. I'm not one to often buy and have lots of extra colors, but that one is super useful, especially for my little iridescent hummingbirds here in the Southwest. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and I didn't, you know, and I didn't really have any logic for laying this down in terms of where the colors went. I just, it was wet on wet, and I just kind of put the colors down and let them go where they were going to go. Nice. Good enough. Great. So um, I'm going to bring Lisa on. Thank you, Valerie. So let's see, Lisa. Wonderful. So you were talking about Lisa Spangler's um, tutorial, so, and I tried following it. Yay. This is what I came up with. Oh, yours came out great. So that was, this one's my second attempt, and this one was my first attempt. Nice. Well, I like both. I can see where the second one, you blended the colors a little more. Mm-hmm. And it's a little darker and you got the background a little more. I like, I like both though. Nice. Yeah. Did you have fun? So the, I did. I really did. So the colors I used for the dark on the bottom were um, phalo blue green shade. And then on the top was um, French ultramarine. Great. And then I don't know how well my lighting's showing it, but I did do a little green and a little brown. Yeah, I like that. Were, what they I like from, about her technique there is the the greens and browns give the trees depth and reality. Um, yeah, and it, I it brings them forward more. And <clears throat> used the Windsor and Newton um, gouache. And How did I you did get your spatters? Did you do the proper technique? <laughs> so mine's a little bit different than Valerie's. So I took the, um, I just loaded up the brush and just sort of like tapped it like this. You guys are just so finger. much better than I am, man. And I'm it did still go cleaning it off my desk. I'm finding it all over. <laughs> it did go all over the desk just a wee bit, but not bad enough that I couldn't clean it up quickly. 
<laughs> nice. Well, thank you. That was awesome. Oh, and the paper I, I'm using oh, yes. are the are these uh, watercolor postcards. Perfect. Oh, that's perfect for doing skyscapitos. Perfect. Mm -hmm. I and do find says, that if I go too big, then it's like a recipe for failure because it, and especially here we're in the Southwest where it's really dry, everything dries so fast that I can't get those beautiful blends. So doing small, smart. Yeah, small works for me too. <laughs> nice, thank you. Let's see, Karen's up next. And Karen, I saw your, you have some lovely posts on um, the, uh, Padlet, thank you. Yes, yes, I put those on the Padlet. So I decided to try a couple different methods. So I was looking, we had snow here in East Side Seattle um, one or two weeks ago. And I looked out the window around four o'clock and with the gray clouds above and the sun setting, the yellow and the orange was just shining right through. And then those classic Northwest trees. Nice. Um, and I do find that the, putting these trees in front, like I, I wasn't really happy with the, so this is watercolor on the top and then metallic gouache on the bottom. And oh. just that sky just didn't look great. But when I put the black trees in front, I feel like the colors popped. They it's did. Too, that, too watery it's, up here. It's the yeah. contrast. So those of you who are new yeah. to watercolor, to get things to really pop, like I was, I was painting water yesterday at a creek you got to place darks next to, if you want really bright colors, you got to get some darks in there somehow to make it pop. And that works beautifully. And go on Padlet, folks, Perfect. and take a look, because Karen's metallic gouache is going to make you go out and buy it right now. <laughs> it's so much fun. Yes, I have a, it's a box of 36. So there are so many Oh so God. many colors. It was a it was a Christmas gift. So there, it's just overwhelming. But oh my I, goodness, I did do um do a color swatch, and it's just those are all sparkly. Um, you know, really, yeah. That they're, they're just really brilliant and just what fun brand, and what just brand something is, different. The brand is Arteza, um, thirty six oh. metallic colors. So oh, I'm it's gonna just something gonna... different. I. <laughs> I'm going to put a plug in here real quick um, too. If you want some really cool metallic colors um, from a company, uh, an indigenous owned company in um, Canada, Canada, Beam yes. Paints. She did, this is her sparkly collection. Um, I think it actually is called the Northern Lights collection and they're so fun. So yeah, there's a gold and a, I mean, how can you not love a paint called Wet Grizzly? <laughs> One of my favorites. Yeah, so just a little plug for that too. But Arteza is a fantastic company too. So, okay, um, I, I actually carry the, the beam paints with me just to add sparkles when I want. Yeah, I'm a real- Karen, those are beautiful. Oh, Karen, what did you Thank use? You. What were the colors you used to get the brights? Um, you know, I didn't write them down, but I think so probably, um, these are the names, uh, papaya, which was the orange mm -hmm. color. These are, the gua and these then, are all gouache? Um, these are the metallic gouache okay. in that Arteza 36. Okay. And then emerald, uh, no, cactus. Cactus oh, okay. is the name of the green. So that's like a um, yellow green. And yeah, actually, it, it was a little, yeah, and then the blue was called Glacier, okay. and then I do have some pur purple in there, which is probably lavender. Okay, and the black, uh, Sue, Sue is asking. Yeah. Which... The black is actually just from my watercolor set, which is the Windsor Newton Cotman student, so and it's just the Payne's Gray. I forgot to okay. use the metallic black on the, on that but it's just watercolor on I kind of like the matte black combo with that um so yeah. 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 so Sue is asking so um gouache is a watercolor it is a, a it's just gouache is opaque it has a a um because I know people use the terms 
gouache thinking it's not a watercolor, but it is <coughs> a water-based water pigment. Um, it, that the binder is the same as our transparent. It's kind of a gray area, um, but gouache is just really, really opaque. It has an additional, um, it's a chalk, I think, um, that makes it opaque, right? I need to look that up, so. Oh. All right, so Caitlin's gonna share next. Thank you, Karen. Thank uh, you. Let's see, Caitlin. Oh, you're muted. Okay, there okay. you go. Okay, can you hear me? Now we can hear you. Hi. So hello from the East Coast. Um, so we're we're in stick season. So I took two photos. I did this this week when I saw that we were that this work this meetup was happening. Um, and so I did both of these are on the same day. So they're both happened this Monday. Oh. And when I took my students out for recess, the sun was like shining through like this this whole bank of gray clouds to the south of us. Oh. Um, and so I was sort of playing with trying to get the grays right in this this painting. I'm still very new to watercolor, and I have not really figured out skies yet. Um, I was kind of trying to get like, I noticed uh, I'm like working on on like seeing color accurately, which is harder than I realized it would be. Um, but I noticed when I was sort of studying the photo that the skies up here, the clouds up here had like a little bit of a bluish gray tint mm. and down here a warmer, like more yellowy gray. I don't think I accurately captured it in that photo. Oh, uh, that's but basically, so cool. every, yeah, Absolutely and then the cute. sun was just like, Hello. Actually, wait, I have the photo. I don't know if I'll be able to hold it up and show. So like, this is what I was trying to capture. I think Washington. you did a fabulous job. Do you know, do you know why the colors are like that? I assumed it had something to do with the angle of reflection. It, it's um, the wavelength. The yeah. Yeah. The, the longer the wavelength is the redder and the shorter. Yeah. Super cool that you noted that. That's a great science fact. Um, oh, I saw somebody ask, what is stick season? Stick season <laughs> in the north, if you are in a wintry area, it is the time between in October when all the leaves fall and in late November, December, we actually have really late snow this year. Like we haven't had any big snowstorms yet, um, but it's the time of year when everything is just sticks. So I drew my, my stick trees right here. No. And so it's just the main feature of the landscape is just sticks everywhere. Um, and it's, it's a lot of people hate it. Um, I like it. I think it's a nice hiking season. So, um, oh, but the other thing I what? love about stick season, the sun sets right during my evening commute home and I commute into the sun both ways, which usually is terrible. Um, but I look out this, so this is the Adirondack mountain. So, so like basically sort of in between those trees and those mountains is Lake Champlain. And then these are the Adirondacks in New York across the lake. And they, they just look amazing and they're like super crisp and they're like a deep purple with the like or yellowy orange glow of the sunset. And this day, like that bank of clouds just looked amazing in the sunset that evening. So I was very, I was very happy with that, how that, that's the first time I painted a sunset and really, really? been happy with that. Oh my gosh. I think everybody here is probably going, that's amazing. Cause sunsets are, I mean. Skies are really hard and sunsets especially. So great job. Really yeah, I had fun doing that. Beautiful. Yeah, now you're hooked. Yeah. Well done. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, be sure to, if you can't, post that on the Padlet if you can. So yep, I just added it. Yay. Thank you. Um, Danny, let's go spotlight Danny. Fantastic. Hello. 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 Hello, everybody. Um, our uh, California skies are much different <laughs> than your guys' skies. Um, this is Lake Tahoe in November, and we just have these big, puffy, puffy guys going on. And this is just in um, with a fountain pen. And uh, then I discovered recently watercolor pencils. I don't know where they've been all my life, or oh, wow. I think actually, I think they were invented after I went to school is what I think happened. <laughs> nice. Um, and this is Joshua Trees. Um, again, mid-November, um, just as beautiful, beautiful puffy clouds. And then these guys like wisping through, just so, so fun. Um, and then this is um, watercolor. This is our typical 
uh, mm, lately, yeah. last couple of weeks, just these, you know, chunky, puffy, puffy, chunky, you know, the whole sky just looks like this. So it's, it's been very fun. Nice. Is that watercolor pencil? This is watercolor. Just water, yeah. so just straight think, watercolor. Yeah. Carefully. Did you do the, the blue around the reserved white space and then work from there? I did. Yeah, I did. Um, and I took quite a bit of sneaking up on it. This was my first, mm -hmm. yeah, <laughs> first go at it. And then I think this was my second go at it. Um, nice and then progression. I like my that. third go at it. And then, 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 then this finally this one. So, so yeah, what, I mean, when you when big, you got to that one, it looks like you <laughs> softened the edges a bit more. Um, so your edges were much more integrated. Did you use more wet on wet? I used, I soaked the heck out of this sheet. Okay. Yeah. And um, I changed my darks. This was Payne's gray. So it wasn't as staining. Um, this was, um, I mixed this. So it was uh, a blue, I think it was ultramarine, magenta, and some yellow. Yeah. And so it stained more so it didn't didn't move around more but also this one I just got um a little more confident in my shapes I think and yeah. was quicker and that so, I think that shows yeah. the, the value of repetition and um for those of you who are new to water, watercolor um staining versus lifting if you're playing with clouds and things like that and you're struggling you might be using colors especially if you're using an off-the-shelf set that are pre-mixed colors um they may be staining and you don't know it meaning when you put it on the paper it's like permanent um where some watercolors um and uh, uh, you can put it on the paper and actually like take a tissue and lift it off again and they're much easier to try to get those soft edges and to correct blorks and problems that you don't like or to create clouds you can actually i think with cobalt blue which is a really lifting blue you can go in paint a a, a cobalt just a complete cobalt sheet and then take a tissue and pull out clouds almost perfect white clouds so thank you. That was great to see the progression, Danny. Thank you. Oh, yeah. And somebody um, asked in the chat if um, this is the Tomoe River paper. And this whole book is, yes. Oh, what and is um, what is Tomoe paper? That is new to me. It's um, a Japanese paper. This is a 52 gram weight. So it's very lightweight. Um, it, oh, you know, it, you can watercolor on it. You can do tons of stuff. It, it does wave a bit, mm -hmm. um, but it's, it's like one of my favorite papers to work on. It's not, not for wet media. It's not made for wet media, but. I but just, you do um, anyway, it looks great. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. It's just, it's fun for me. It's um, highly uncontrollable. <laughs> <laughs> I like that, but it, so you, you're, I like to use the same thing uh, just because I, I don't like to mix up my papers. Um, so yeah, I tend to force my paper to my will. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I'm i kind of the opposite. I just do kind of whatever. And on, on this um, this paper, when you get uh, you know something wet on it, especially watercolor, because the watercolor does not soak in uh, at all, you can um, shove it around on the is surface it, of the paper. Oh, is it like Yupo? A bit. Okay. But um, Yupo just kind of lays there flaccidly and doesn't really respond to anything. I, this, I, I this, it. this does. This wrinkles and it makes noise and it, it okay. has uh, lots of things to say about it. But here I was testing some colors and you can, you know, there's a lot of water on here and you can just kind of like shove things you know but then you have to oh, wait for it to dry too so okay so everything has a trade-off doesn't it i find that yeah. interesting that um that you know like well you know this works well for for as as um ian k says to, to, is it tomoe 
Tome away paper. Yeah, um, it's Japanese. I, I've heard it said many different ways. I'm not yeah. exactly sure, oh, but that's how me. you spell it. <laughs> okay, okay. And um, so well, fountain pen enthusiasts like that. And, and again, that's, I've been testing a bunch of new papers because my favorite paper is now discontinued, I just found out. Um, so I'm mm. testing new papers and like some of them, I'm, it's like Goldilocks, right? You're like, oh gosh, you know, my fountain pen is nice on this paper, but then when I add watercolor, it's like, Bleh. I don't like the tooth and, um, or it doesn't dry very fast or yeah, it's, boy, is it hard yeah. you know, those of you who, we all have our favorite papers, right? Let's, let's go to, um, I'm going to go to gallery view so uh, we can see everybody. But yeah, so everyone has their own favorite paper. Raise your hand if you're like, you have a favorite paper that you're kind of stuck with. No, am I the only one? <laughs> so the rest of you guys bounce around? Wow, I, I'm fascinated by that because um, when I bounce around, I feel like my techniques or my outcomes suffer because I feel like it's a language, like my paints or my pen, I, I know how that works on this paper. But if I bounce to another paper, it's like I have to relearn how those pigments and my ink work on that paper. Cool. That's, that's great. You guys are braver than I am. <laughs> I'm also kind of lazy. Um, so, so Suzanne's going to share hers. Let's see. Great. Show us what you've got. Oh, um, where you're on, you're muted still. Okay. Now. Do you hear me? Yes. Okay. Hello from Germany. Oh, fantastic. Um, <laughs> last week I made a little tour on a mountain um, about 130 kilometers from my home. And it was foggy and cloudy and rainy. And wow. I painted on the top of the mountain. <laughs> and I think it's very hard to paint the skies. Um, I'll show you. I hope uh, you may see it. Uh, can you see it? Yes. Yes. Wow. Um, it's Dick season two, you see. <laughs> <laughs> um, and on this mountain, there are some uh, uh, monuments, uh, uh, Christ. Uh, how do you say? Are they statues. Difficult. Statues. Statues, statues. Mm -hmm. but uh, in former times it was uh, um, a holy place for the non-Christian, um, for the Celtic people. Oh, interesting. And uh, when the weather is cloudy and rainy, you don't feel the Christian uh, uh, forces, I, I think. You feel the old stones and... Uh, like this, but I think in this light, it's heavy to see. It's hard to see the clouds and the foggy uh, uh, weather. The uh, forest is gone behind the fog. And I love the way you've dropped in just very pale green to, to give us a hint that that's forest back there and, um, what colors did you use for the grays? Those are beautiful with just a hint of um, blue. I use just uh, uh, indigo and burnt umber. Uh-huh. Okay, good. So that, that gives mixed a gray in blue gray, what we call gunmetal yes. gray. And if you uh, uh, take more of the burnt umber, Umber, umbra, yeah. I don't know the name. It's burnt umber, uh, yes, exactly. Burnt umber. Um, it, it will make a warmer gray and otherwise more indigo, it's a cooler gray. And I don't use black. Yes. In those pictures. Um, I like that, but that's beautiful. I think it's, it's uh, uh, not good to see in this light because there is color, uh, color too, <laughs> but yes. it, it looks like white. Uh -huh. oh. But perhaps when I go closer, yes. nearer, closer, 
you can see it very much so <laughs> beautiful okay. that's great so great technique great for for those who are learning the um you know you'd be tempted to go straight to the the black on your palette but by mixing the grays you can get a lot more depth then you get those the hints of the blues and the, or if you need to go warmer, um, I really like making my my grays and blacks from, I use in Danthrone and burnt sienna, but umber and, and indigo, just experiment. Uh, if you want lots of texture, I think another good one is um, ultramarine makes gorgeous, gorgeous mm -hmm. grays because it's super mm. textury. Mm. But it was, uh, uh, excuse me. Go ahead. <laughs> it was a, a real uh, uh, challenge because uh, it was very uh, wet air, and my my painting did not dry. Mm -hmm. So I had to take it the whole way in my hand, the mountain down. Oh, wow! <laughs> so you couldn't close your book. <laughs> No, I couldn't close it. Oh my. <laughs> that's oh, that's so color. interesting. I've got the opposite problem when I was learning watercolor um, about five years ago. Um, I, I couldn't understand why I was failing and it was because I'm in the desert and I didn't know that, you know, it was drying within moments of me putting a wash down and mm -hmm. it just wasn't working. And I was so frustrated. And finally the, uh, Mark Tarot Holmes, um, I asked him and he's like, well, yeah, you're in Arizona. <laughs> Gotta use more water. So when you have too much water though, the opposite, you can't do anything until it dries. So nice. Mm. Anyone else <laughs> wanna share or just, you know, get, there's loads of great tips in the chat. So um, some folks talking about their papers, um, Candace says she bounces around a lot depending on what media she's using. Um, Sarah just is has dredged up an old box of watercolor paper. Oh, nice. You have no idea what it is. Isn't that fun? Um, uh, Michelle's using 90 pound Strathmore. I really like that too. Um, 90 pound is great. Um, and someone asked what I, my, the paper I've been using for, I don't know what, five years now, maybe a little longer. It was B paper, B, it's B, B, E, E, but they got bought by Royal Brush Company and then they just discontinued their 90 pound, just poof like that. So, um, and I like the 90, it, it's got better tooth from my pen. So, so, hey, let's see, Beck and Deborah. So Beck, let's bring you up let's see spotlight yay what have you been working on hey. hey so i um i only work on any kind of paintings when i'm out in our truck camping uh, so i just store my book out in the truck and then i have to use whatever i have with me um to nice. paint <laughs> and usually it's just a usually it's just mono really quick with pen or whatever but i was getting bored with that so i wanted to try some color so for this this one I actually used Sharpie and highlight, highlighter. Look mm. at that. Awesome. Oh uh, nice. So the, the black is uh, Sharpies. And then I thought I was going to get a little bit of glow with the highlight here. And then I was going to try to figure out the rest. Um, so I was going to use, I had a couple of water, watercolors with me. So I put, the, I put the highlight on and then I started adding the water and of course the highlight went all over the place. I was very happy the Sharpie didn't smear. Um, so We're I tried absolutely... to work with that. So you so, use a highlighter pen, you said? Yeah, yeah, because we have a highlighter in the truck. So a yellow okay. highlighter. This is um, so impressive. <laughs> and I just, so what I, I started by putting the Sharpie in here to get the dark outline. And then I had a highlight along the edge. And then I started doing the water wash and it kind of all, all smeared around. So I let I that like dry and then I just put blue and and a, I think I had blue and like yellow orca with me at the time so I was trying to blend them to get some greens that's not so green there but anyway you can see the I was pretty I was pretty pleased on how it worked out and I okay. love the way it the contrast is with the dark and the light and the I mean the really bright here with the highlight so 
Okay, everybody, that is so fun. Let's mark that down. I'm going to play with highlighter and Sharpie now. <laughs> um, so Sharpie should be pigment ink, is, I think, is, is, is pretty permanent. So that's awesome. I think I think it was something like this that we had. Okay. I can't I can't say for sure, but like this or try another Northern Lights with a, Sharpie. with a highlighter. <laughs> and then a Sharpie. Yeah. So awesome. That's fantastic. Wonderful. Well, thank you. And hey, um, I can see you back there. No, he can't he can't hear. Oh, you have your you're gonna wave. Tell him hi. Hi, um. <laughs> <laughs> She's um, saying hi. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you. I was <laughs> highlighted too. <laughs> you. Awesome. I must see Deborah had her hand raised, so we're gonna spotlight Deborah. Yay! Um, I am just be a beginner with watercolor, and uh, what I wanted to share was something uh, I went up. Um, uh, I live in California on the Central Coast, and I went up to a vineyard and um, that has a great view up on the side of the mountain and tried to capture some clouds that we had, uh, uh, the overcast skies. We typically don't ha have, it's, we're typically gray and just, you know, one co solid color. So these clouds were just beautiful. I did not do a good job, but I wanted to get some suggestions. Um, uh, I used uh, uh, the sky palette. Um, uh huh. Yeah. So, whoops. Oh, okay. I got it. This is uh, Roseanne's sky palette, and I mostly use um, the manganese blue and then the uh, phyllo blue and burnt sienna for the grays. But it was so beautiful because this right here, the sun was just peeking through the, the clouds just a little bit. And I used uh, one of the gel marking pens for that. And uh, I just put a little color with some um, watercolor pens that I have. But uh, um, what I did was I sketched it out in the field and then I came back and I uh, painted at my office. And so um, anyhow, so that I was, that. I didn't have, go ahead. But that, that, that looks really nice. Did you, so the, the, the harder edges, did you use a lot of water or not a, a, a lot of water? Probably not a lot of water. I used um, the, the uh, pens with the, the water filled pens, the oh, okay, okay, yeah, not pens, I mean, um, paint, water brush, brushes, water brushes, yeah. Oh, there we go. And uh, I think I'm gonna start trying some real brush, not, I guess they're real brushes, because I do have some nice ones because I just not, I don't have a lot of control. It seems like I with find that water. too with the with the 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 water brushes is really hard to control how much water is coming out. Like you'll go going along fine, and then sometimes they'll blork out too much water, and you'll get yeah you'll get a bleed um, or not quite enough. Um, that's beautiful. I love the grays. Uh, you'd probably okay. get more if it were wetter. You could get more blend um, or. You know, with those lifting watercolors, you could probably go in and blend it a little more, but I I wouldn't mess with it. I, I think it's beautiful. Thank you. I really scrubbed it here too much, trying to get the colors. And then I uh, did lift it here because it had gotten kind of lighter there, uh, but it didn't, it, it didn't work real good. So I consider this a, an experiment yep. and... You know, don't have a problem. I have to say, I couldn't get my black dark enough. Uh, well, it, it it looked like the clouds, so I went over it with a sharpie. <laughs> ah, so. good, good point. And you saw how I mean, Danny had did it how many times? Three, four times before. Yeah, it you yeah. know worked the way. So it it takes many iterations. Sometimes it it takes a lot of practice. So it does. That's a good I lesson. wanted to share one other thing. Um, I got to see the the moon's oculation of Mars, and um, 
I haven't painted it yet. The sky was pretty, just pretty dark, except it had some rings around the moon. But um, we uh, stopped, we were in a different city and we stopped purposely to watch the eclipse. So here is Mars and just within, I would say two minutes, maybe three minutes, uh, Mars was gone behind the moon. So th that was really a fun thing to watch. And now I want to paint it, but I'm not, I I don't know where to go. Oh, <laughs> I bet the next person up might have some tips. Avery's next, and she's done some amazing stuff with planets lately. So I'm hoping she can share that. So uh, take a look at what me. Avery. I'm going to put you on the spot. Sorry, um, because. I, I said, you've got to share what you're doing. Cause yeah, some really fun planet stuff. Oh, you're muted still. Yes, yeah, so I work in a lot of media. I, I color pencil, uh, I struggle with watercolor. And then I recently started doing oil pastel um, and I'm loving the oil pastel and I've been, um, I found out that um, NASA is very liberal with their letting you use their photographs as long as yes. you give them credit. Yeah, they're very, you know, and when you think about it, it's our tax dollars, we know those telescopes. So, um, but anyway, I, I was gonna show you a couple of these and I have one watercolor, but this is this one I just did, which I maybe some of you saw on. Um, oh my God. So this is um, the, a new view of Saturn or Jupiter, excuse me, Jupiter that was uh, with the new James Webb telescope. And back in uh, October, up there in the middle, right up here, I have a little drawing of um, when I was in New Jersey in really clear skies, I was able to see uh, four of the, three of the four um, Galean moons of uh, Jupiter, which just got me super excited. And um, so then I went and did some research and I found some really cool pictures up from NASA of the different moons, which I did all in oil pastel. Um, this, all, this is on black. Um, Strathmore charcoal paper. This is about nine, um, about 11 by, 11 by 17. I mean, you have to work kind of big. Um, well, I do some nine by 12 things too, but this is big. Um, and then I used a white gel pen for the words um, nice. and some color gel pen up here for the lettering and stuff. Um, that's so if you one were, I did. If you were to tackle that in watercolor, well, A, would you tackle it in watercolor? Um, would you use the wash? But I don't know how you get the dark background. I guess you could. That, so you have your instant dark background around here with your black. I paper. know that's that's. The you thing. might have to use like a dark blue uh, watercolor around it or something very very dark to make it kind of. They really do pop because if you look at it, the photographs, they're, the sky is very dark. The night sky. Yeah. And, uh, so you could you could Jesus paint your your planets first, and then you'd have to painstakingly paint dark around it that would be hard but okay. still possible here's another one i did on the the tarantula nebula oh my god um, mm. so the the twos of the paper just if you take the so you have a just put this down for a second you have your um pastel but you take the you take the paper off and then you drag it across on here and you get these really nice uh textural views of the uh, they're gas clouds basically and wow. um they, and you blend right on top of each other you blend one color on top of another you, it's an experimental thing you just play around with it and then a lot of the really bright so stars come in different colors they come in uh yellow white blue and red depends on how hot they are and how big they are and so i use gel pens for some of those you could also use um, um color pencil so I drew a lot of this because there's lots and lots of, these are basically star factories, these yeah. nebulas. Um, nebulas. And uh, the scientists think that this looks like a tarantula nest apparently with all those webbing. That's amazing. Um, so Betsy was asking, will regular watercolor show up on black paper? And no, it, it won't. So gouache works well on toned paper, but even on black gouache would have a, a struggle um, because it's water-based media. So the pastels sit on top of the black in a different way. Um, it's a different this type is a whole of- nother, This is a whole other media um, yeah. that you can yeah. play around with. And you know what? Um, I used to work in soft pastels and they're very, very expensive. 
but you can get like so like do you colors. use Derwent are they Derwent or Faber Castell okay. no, I use a couple I use a couple different brands I I love my Faber Castells um this is like you know eighteen dollars if you're not talking I mean I used to spend three dollars for one pastel when they're and then this is another brand. So having softer and harder um, pastels is good because they do different things. So, but I mean, you don't have to spend a lot of money to um, to buy these. So, so Avery, what's um, the the Derwent ink tense? Is that that's not pastel? That's just intense watercolor. That is the, right? um, I have those too. <laughs> I love <laughs> actually. I love watercolor pencils. Like the other lady who was talking earlier. Um, and the ink tents are just really intense colors. Okay, um, so, so it's it nice to work on. So I have both. I have the regular uh, Derwent's. I have about, I don't know, 30 or 40 colors. And then these are the ink tenses. They don't come in as many colors, but if you want some drama, these colors are just, you, you, you know, draw on your paper and then you add the watercolor pencil and these things just go boom, you know. They're okay, just, that's good to know. Yeah, so they're a little more expensive. So, but I mean, I, I think I love playing with these. I don't use them all the time, but I mean, I, when you need some, um, something strong, like a dark cloud or something, there's this okay. one blue that's really So dark. Deborah, that might be fun to look into. I mean, I'm, I'm not one to go heavy on like buying. I, I buy a ton. I love to buy supplies too, but I don't carry them with me when I'm out in the field, but doing Mars, you know, that, that'll be fun to see how, how you might do that and make it really show. I think I think the, um, so those of you who are asking like, you know, black paper, and there's been some really good um, suggestions on what paper works. Um, Stonehenge Aqua, Danny recommends, which is a black, comes in black. Um, Richardson has has a good black paper, which is inexpensive. So that's the other thing when you're experimenting, <laughs> you don't want super expensive stuff, right? Um, and then Marsh has been throwing lots of great links on, um, you know, like uh, the NASA database, if you want some fantastic photos, and then YouTube, a video on using black paper. Um, I've been experimenting with the black paper. Um, I don't have it in front of me here, but I did, I did the super blood super moon using uh, watercolor pencils, and then I did not put water on them. I just let the pigment lay on top of the black paper. And then you could paste black paper in your journal, Deborah. That might work. Yeah. Um, that's a great idea. I hadn't even thought of doing it that way. Yeah. Um, that's what. I have that's one other idea for people. Oops. Okay. Yeah. And so then I got the reds in there and, and yellows. And um, I think actually what I, I didn't even use red. What I did was I used yellow first. And then I laid. Um, uh, magenta over it to bring out a brighter color because I actually didn't have a red anyway but I figured that the glow had more to do with depth than one color so you might try that well we've kind of come up on the end of our hour but this was some fun stuff this time yeah. I wonder if we should kind of so I had a, a an offer from David Lucas who's a photographer who does he's got a whole bunch of um, winter landscape, skyscape photography, he'd be willing to give us a bunch of photos if we want, all wanted to play with like the same photos. Like maybe we, we choose six photos and then we all work on our own interpretation of those. What, what would you guys think of that? That would be I love of, that idea. Yeah. I think we should try that for January. Um, and then maybe I'll get to see some real northern lights. And I'm still working on my northern lights. I'm de determined to get those. Um, um, Roseanne, before we uh, drop off, and since I was late, I don't know if you talked about your um, uh, uh, your book being published in in England. Oh, did you yeah. celebrate I that? Did. Did not. It's just kind of a news that finally uh, the books are available in England, well, in Europe and Australia now. Um, much cheaper than you can get them from me <laughs> because yeah. of shipping. So that's 
Good news. Thank you for that. And yeah, they finally are in stock just in time for the Royal Mail to go on strike. Oh, wow. No. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Suzanne being in Germany would be able to um, pick one up. Yes, um, that's great news. They're finally, um, yeah. Oh, and then he says a virtual field trip of Alaska would be fun. You know, I did one and we did, um, actually I did one and Max Rom, no wait, who? No, Kim McNett did one at the Wild Wonder Conference. So Nini, if, if you look on my website, there is a virtual field trip to Alaska that I did last year, right? Yeah, last year. Yeah. And, um, and so did uh, Kim McNett for Wild Wonder. She took us to a glacier, uh, several glaciers, which was super fun um, if, you, if you were at the Wild Wonder. So and um, Sarah is also offering some photos. So I'll get together like a bunch of photos and maybe we can vote on them on Padlet or something and then choose half a dozen that we would all work from. So we kind of all get to see how we would interpret stuff. And kind of our, I'll, let me, I'll get you just two seconds, Marsha. I just wanted to, I had two takeaways that I really loved from this session. One was, Thanks to, to uh, Beck, um, use what you have. Mm -hmm. I really like that. Like, wait, it never occurred to me to put, <gasps> would I actually put highlighter in my precious journal? <laughs> <laughs> now I am. I think I like that idea. Yeah, Sharpie, oh my God, my Mont Blanc just fainted. <laughs> <laughs> It just squirted mm -hmm. some ink. It went, <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, and then also, you know, Danny reminded us, practice, practice, you know, um, when she showed us that fabulous sky, it wasn't her first one out of the box. Um, oh, and something funny, I just, if you haven't looked at the chat, um, let's see. Uh, uh, uh. Wait, wait, I'm, I, I just lost it. Lots of stuff in the chat. Um, Karen, just, all right, who said that they were just, um, see, I can't find it. Someone said they just tried the, the gouache splatter thing and it worked, but she's got it all, also got it all over her too. That made me feel better. Um, Marsha, go ahead. Okay, um, hi. Hi, everybody. Hey, um, you're talking about a virtual tour and um, on Tuesday, and I'm going to put it put it up here. I think that's OK, Roseanne. Oh, absolutely. I'm going to do a little lesson on easy perspective in icebergs, <laughs> and we're going to do a, a virtual tour. Um, it was a GoPro video I took um, of a arch iceberg in Greenland some years ago. It's simple, it's kid friendly. Fun. And I don't know, I tend to be a little bit like Jack and I start going off over here. So, um, well, you know, time wise, but um, join, I will have Gatorade blue ice cubes to draw oh. from my <laughs> camera. But, um, you know, so in Amy sides from um, the South, is it Arkansas or Georgia will co-host with me and um, Kate Ryder from Hawaii will also co-host with me. So if it's 930 Tuesday, um, barring any other unforeseen <laughs> circumstances or Zoom stuff, but it's up on the community um, calendar for Wild Wonder. Oh, yes. Um, oh, I put and thank yeah. you for reminding me, everybody. This, let's start getting the word out. We are in the process of portaging the global community event calendar for nature journaling from Jack's website over to Wild Wonder uh, Foundation, which is the parent of the Wild Wonder Conference. And we're going to have so many more resources as well. But thank you for that reminder. And thanks for using the new calendar um, on yeah. wildwonder.org. So look there from now on out. All of us put anything we can, you know, it, if you're hosting events, please put it on there. You just contact us and we'll give you admin um, uh, 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 privileges to post to the calendar. So 
Yeah, I got the goosebumps and um, I think about it. So there's no charge, but there will be a link for um, a donation. So, um, but there is no charge and it's kid friendly. I mean, really it's kid friendly. It's I'm doing it. Nice. <laughs> so, Excellent. so easy, 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 right? You just go with the flow. Okay. Pa paper, pencil, maybe watercolor, colored pencil, just show up, just hang out. So sounds okay. like fun. I don't think I, I think we're going to be getting ready to fly to Alaska. So I won't be able to make it. Um, so um, and if we we're go not to lights, I'll try to film Northern Lights in Alaska, and then we can do a live uh, virtual Northern Lights. So that would be fun. Yeah, and we're not recording it because of being kid friendly at this no, point. You but don't, that you we can't, can't do it again. You, so. But if you go live cams on explore.org, they actually have some Northern Light cams, but you it's timing. But no, I use it with my students. I, and it was really fun. So um, isn't it fun? I've been it's been driving me crazy. Like as soon as we left Alaska, I would go to the cam that's just north of our place in Alaska, and it's like, oh, there's some gorgeous northern lights. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we'll see. All right, everybody, we're gonna close it up. But thank you all for coming. Um, this is recorded. I will put the chat in there too because there's. Thank you, everybody who who added to the chat. And then sometime in January, we'll we'll re meet, um, get some images from David, Sarah, and 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 throw them up there. And then you can pick one, and and we'll all see what we come up with. That would be a lot of fun. And and save your iterations. Let's let's remind everybody each other that <laughs> it's it takes process. You know, this is my first attempt at Northern Lights. Blah. So we'll see the, the process. So save your process. Thank you, Roseanne. Happy holidays, Thank everybody. Everyone. Everybody have a Thank wonderful you. holiday. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye.